In question five of the series where we use the simplex method to solve maximization problems, what you see on your screen is an initial simplex tableau that we set up from a previous video. And we set it up based on the information provided here. Of course, when we did this, we did it by hand. All I've done here is converted it digitally. And also when you set up your initial simplex tableau, you always want your objective function to be at the bottom and your constants, which we've labeled this column C on the far right. Now to begin solving this matrix, you start by locating the most negative number in the last row, which is always dedicated to your objective function. The most negative number is negative 120, and this column now is important. It's called the pivot column, because using the pivot column will take the constants and divide it by each of these numbers. 100 divided by 1 is 100, and I'll write these numbers down for reference. 180 divided by 1 is 180. And 1,000 divided by 15 should give you 66 and 2 thirds. Of these three numbers, the smallest is 66 and 2 thirds. Therefore, this number 15 will be considered our pivot number. And we'll use row 3 to make 1, 1, and negative 120 into zeros. You can do that by using matrix row operations. For example, if I want to make this 1 into a 0, I'll multiply all of row 1 by 15 and then subtract from row 3. So I'll document that for you. Row 1 becomes 15 times row 1 minus row 3. And just to give you a demonstration, 15 times 1 is 15 minus 15 is equal to 0. So make that into a 0. 15 times 1 is 15 minus 3. That becomes a 12. And you'll continue to do this for the rest of the numbers. This becomes a 6. Here we have a 15, 0, negative 1, 0. And you can always spot if it's 0 if both of them are 0. And this last number becomes 500. To make this 1 into a 0, I'll multiply all of row 2 by 15 and minus row 3. So row 2 becomes row 2 times 15 minus row 3. 15 minus 15 makes it a 0. 2 times 15 is 30, minus 3 is 27. And you continue to do this where you end up with 36, 0 here, 15 here, negative 1, 0, and 2700. For this last row, I'll multiply all of row 3 by a factor of 8. And I'll add what I get to row 4. So our new row 4 becomes this. 0, negative 40 becomes negative 16, negative 60, 12, 0, 0, 8, and 1. The constant is 8,000. Of course, at this point, you want to recreate your matrix so that you're not confused with all the annotations. Your new matrix should look like this. Now that I've recreated my matrix, take a look. Row 3 has not changed. It's the exact same thing as before. Rows 1 and rows 2 and row 4 have changed. At this point, you want to again reanalyze your objective function for negative numbers. The most negative number here is negative 16. This is our pivot column. And I'll divide 500 by 12 to find my quotients. So 500 divided by 12 gives me 40 more than 2 thirds. 2700 divided by 27 is 100. And 1,000 divided by 3 is 333 and 1 third. This means that 12 is our new pivot number. And we'll use 12 to make 27, 3, and negative 16 all into zeros. Let's start by making this 27 into a 0. To do that, we'll take row 1, multiply it to 27, minus row 2 times 12. This will serve as our new row 2. To make this 3 into a 0, I'll multiply all of row 3 by 4, and then take R1 minus the product of row 3 times 4. So row 3 becomes row 1 minus 4 times row 3. Lastly, to make this negative 16 into a 0, I'll multiply all of row 1 by 16 and add it to 12 times row 4. So I'm leaving it to you to be able to rewrite these. For example, if I multiply this by 4, I end up with 60. 0 minus 60 is negative 60. 
and you would do the same thing for every other element within that row. If you do this correctly, your brand new augmented matrix should look like this. Okay, at this point you should notice that your objective function no longer has any negative numbers. So you can start solving. This will serve as one of your basic solutions. So will this column. And the reason why I'm choosing x1 and x2, sub two, because you only have one number and the rest are zeros. That means you can solve for the variable. Where else do we see that? Right here for s sub 2 and right here. Beginning with x sub 1, we have negative 60. x sub 1 is equal to negative 3,500. Solving for x sub 1 should give you 58 and a third. And if you recall, x sub 1 referred to the number of acres of potatoes dedicated in this farm. So you need 58 and a third of this farm dedicated to potatoes. What about the second column? We have 12 x sub 2 and that was equal to 500. Solving for x sub 2 which was for corn 41 and 2 thirds. So 41 and 2 thirds acres should be dedicated to corn to maximize profit. You'll do the same thing for s sub 2 s sub 2 times negative 180 is equal to negative 18,900. Solving for s sub 2 gives us 105. And lastly, this column, our z column, which gives us our maximum profit, 12 times z is equal to 104,000. Dividing both sides by 12, we end up with the maximum profit of 8,666 and 2 thirds. And there you have it. That is how to use the simplex method to solve maximization problems.